live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program. We go out to all the technology shows, help extract the signal from the noise, and uh, here at the MIT CDOIQ Chief Data Officer and in Information Quality, it's actually pretty easy for us to separate the signal from the noise because the quality of guest here is really good. You've got lots of people that have been uh, involved in the industry, uh, both the chief data officers, people looking at that trend. Happy to bring on the program for the first time, uh, David Blaskowski, who's with uh, the Financial Semantics Collaborative. Uh, David, welcome to the program. Wonderful, Stu. Thank you so much for the invitation to participate. Yeah, here. I'm glad. You know, we have some of these events. We could just kind of pull somebody off the show floor here, as it were, <laughs> and bring man on there. the street kinds yeah. of interviews. Uh, yeah. So uh, you actually have. Uh, it, it, we, it's our fourth year that we've had the cube here. It's actually my first time here. Um, you've been coming for a number of years. G could give our audience a little bit of just your background, uh, what you're doing, and uh, you know what, what led you to this event. Sure. Well, I, I mean, by training, I'm a business guy, uh, economist, uh, MBA type, who somewhere uh, about 20 years ago got waylaid and found himself going deeper and deeper into this realm of, of data. Data which, uh, you know, we, we all love analytics, we all love, you know, we all love analytics, we all love the things we can do with data, but we keep forgetting that at, in, in the beginning, it's the data, and our results are only as good as our data. So, um, in financial services, I had been involved with data, then I was uh, sucked up just before the financial crisis into starting the data programs at the SEC. Uh, for public company reporting, and then uh, starting up the, uh, helping start up the uh, Office of Financial Research at the Treasury Department, all in the interest of improving financial stability by having the kind of data that you really could analyze and understand reliably. Um, then I did a, a, a couple of years stint uh, uh, heading up data governance at State Street. So I've seen data from you know, the, the analytical side, data from the government uh, and regulatory compliance side, and then from how do, you, how do you really make the data within a major financial institution fit for purpose? Excellent, and uh, you've been coming for a number of years, you usually right. speak at the event, I think you're just an attendee this year, <laughs> uh, but maybe, New responsibilities. You know, give us your kind of longitudinal view as sure. to uh, you know, this group here, how you've seen uh, you know, so, some of the challenges changing, the participants uh, and the discussion changing. Well, you know, the, the topics really have evolved significantly. I mean, from the days when there weren't many people here and questions were around how, how do we find our data, how do we even know what we have, to a point now where we have use cases, we have tremendous experience. Now, I'm, I'm not aware of very many, maybe not even any organizations that have absolutely mas absolute mastery of their data. But the, the sharing environment here uh, between uh, those coming from the public sector side, from the private sector side and the academic side um, is just phenomenal in terms of, of getting that knowledge out there. Uh, I, we know a lot more about how to make data better and how to make chief data officers more effective at carrying out their job, uh, providing value and providing reliability. Okay. Um and you've been on kind of the regulation side. I'm, I'm curious, we hear a lot of to talk here about, you know, open data mandates sure. and, you know, there, there's open source. So kind of regulation, governance, open source, how, how do those all fit together in your mind? Well, um, very loosely, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of interesting concepts there. Uh, in fact, I just came from a wonderful session on, on open data with... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, deputy CIO of the federal government and the CIO, uh, the, C, uh, the chief data officer for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts talking about the tremendous progress made in making data more available, open data, uh, more available to uh, those who want to uh, make government more accountable or those who want to innovate with the data to make better, better tools, do, do, do more for the community. Um, but you know, there still remain significant issues. How to make that, that data through standards and interoperability uh, approaches to make it more usable, uh, more, more able to be cultivated by those who want to do cool and interesting things with it. Okay, I, I'm, I'm curious, from kind of the analytics standpoint, how can we use that from a prediction standpoint? I, <laughs> I think your, your background, you know, how, how do we prevent the, you know, the, the future financial disasters? <laughs> oh gosh, uh, you, you know, um, pro it, 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 it's, it's unlikely that you can prevent a financial crisis through data. You know, if you could predict the future of financial markets, well, frankly, you'd go and you'd invest on your own to make money from it. That's, a, that, that's out there. Um, 
Uh, you really can't predict markets. What you can do is improve your ability to identify risks that are emerging, and then if something happens, to understand where you are and recover from it. And you know, through the work of one of my former uh, agencies, the Office of Financial Research at the United States Treasury, um, th th they've really made tremendous steps, as have their international partners around the world, uh, in terms of identifying the kinds of analytics that would make it possible to identify risks and to then standardize the data that would be required in order to be able to populate those analytics. So it'll never predict, but you can identify that there are problems emerging. And if something happens, whether expected or unexpected, that you can do what we couldn't do in 2009, which was to clean up effectively uh, from it. Okay. Um, what about the, the, the sources of data? A lot of time we talk about, you know, in time a company, you know, you've got all the silos with the data, but many companies we talk to are leveraging internal data, right. external data, you know, how do you see kind of sources of data changing? Um, you, you know, there'll, there'll always be internal and external sources of data. I think the real frontier around it is, um, is what data that's out there um, is, it would benefit from standardization, from collaboration among participants in an industry or even across industries. For example, uh, I've, I've been privileged to work on uh, the financial industry business ontology, FIBO, which was really about, uh, related to uh, how would you represent financial contracts, uh, 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 interest rate swaps, derivatives of all kinds. Um, and, and if you can, uh, so that data might exist within a firm, but frankly, you don't do deals with yourself. If you're trading a security, a, a derivative, it's with another firm. So it really helps if the two kinds of information that are coming together are identical. And one, I as the receiver know what you, my counterparty, are sending me. So it's, it's not yet a full-fledged standard. It's still being worked on by the Enterprise Data Management uh, uh, council, but you know this is illustrative of the kind of work that's going on uh, around the country and around the world. And saying, look, we're not making no company is making its money on having its data exist in its own unique form. We we all make money by having our, by being able to carry out economic transactions. And if we are able to use data that that makes that, that facilitates that, all the better. Yeah. Um Data quality is something we, we talk a lot about at this show. A any guidance on kind of techniques or things that you see on how people can improve data quality in general? Well, you, you know, it's a bit of a truism, but really it does come down to wanting to build a, a data culture. I mean, you, you can instill all kinds of rules on, on folks, but in the end, you have to build within your organization the understanding that data actually matters. Whether you're a bank or whether you're a, cre a credit card company or whether you're selling widgets. Um, you know, at the end of the day, whether you're a public company or a private company, uh, you have customers and you have other people, you know, management committees and, and others who need to know, investors, who need to know how you're doing. And it's all so much easier if from the beginning you're thinking about what that data ought to be, what it ought to mean, uh, how you want to use it, and what, what the implications are to how you should collect it and maintain it. Uh, that th those are the, the big lessons. I'd like to kind of bring that all together in, into, uh, you know, it, it's, it's Monday morning, do you know where your data is? And that, that opens a whole lot of other questions around, you know, do you know um, where your data lives? Do you know what it means? Do you know how it's being managed? These are issues that uh, apply to every organization, not just to data intensive organizations, and there's a lot of work to be done. But it's, it's, it's ultimately within the, within the grasp of any, any leader. Yeah, so, so you, you've been on both uh, kind of the government side and on the enterprise side. Um, technology, people, processes, you know, can, can you pick what's the hardest? <laughs> um, I, you know, I'll go back to what I said before. I mean, there, there are a lot of technical challenges in, in everything, but the hardest part is, is um, uh, it could be the easiest part in the hands of the, the right leader, but is building the support that, that, that data actually really matters. And, and it matters enough that you should take some time and some effort to understand what it is you have rather than moving on to the next pressing business problem. You have to solve some of these, these problems in real time and, and recognize that as you do it, it will further facilitate your ability to add value to your business. All right, just, just curious, we're running low on time, but have you looked at blockchain uh, at all and kind of the impact there? Yes, I absolutely have. Uh, you know, on, on, on the one hand, uh, you know, blockchain uh, is, is way up on the hype curve. Uh, on, on the other hand, you know, um, 
the, the ledger technologies such as, as blockchain offer a lot of promise to being able to facilitate uh, exchanges, not just of value, but of, of information uh, from organization to organization. Um, you know, are they right for every purpose? No. N n no, no cool, neat technology has turned out to be right for everything. But, um, uh, you know, it has a role to play in, 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 in organizations, um, not just banks, uh, but all kinds of organizations. And, and, it, and it's a tool in the, uh, it's, it's a weapon really in the, uh, in the chief data officer's arsenal. All right, well, David Buskowski, really appreciate you taking some time out of the experience here at the conference. Uh, we'll be back with lots more coverage here from the CDO, MI, uh, CDO IQ here at MIT. Uh, you've been watching theCUBE.